أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قال وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث صلوات بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبت يدا أبي لهب وتأب ما أخنا عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب وامنأته حمالة الهدب في جيدها حبل من مسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القد وما أدراك ما ليلة القد ليلة القد لخيل من ألف شهر تنزل ملائكة واللوح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أم سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان العين الرجيم بفضل الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله والحمد حقه كما يستحقه حمدا كثيرا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله اللهم العن أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابع له على ذلك اللهم العن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعت وبايعت وتابعت على قتله اللهم العنهم جميعا ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله أجمعين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين Whenever I try to Google something related to religion, one of the worst things that used to happen, I would always get the opinions of other schools of thought. But then now, there are actually celebrities that have the names that you look up. Someone wants to look up Dua, they'd get a female singer and if they wanted to look up Shia they'll get a male actor and they've adopted these names 
And as such that when we go through these things, we don't get what we're actually looking for. And definitions of things change as we move along in our lives. They have a new understanding. The further we move into our lives, the further our understanding becomes, we start to see things, we start to see things and um, uh, words differently as to what we saw them initially. Words that we understood in a certain manner at a young age change in their value and their meaning as we get older because we start to understand their definition. It doesn't become just a word. I can see the etymology, which is the study of the origin of the word. Where did the word come from? What is the reason they use this word? When we used to watch, those that are old enough, they used to watch Steve Irwin with this crocodile hunter and he would say, crikey. The origin of that was that because to say God's name in vain was blasphemy, that you couldn't say Christ, instead you would say, crikey. That was the adaptation. As like when the Arabs, rather than swearing to someone's religion, they swear to someone's rooster now. As that has been an adaptation where they've moved from one to another. The word Shia, I need to understand before I understand who we are talking about. When I hear the word Shia, we think firstly an Islamic sect. The actual word Shia, to begin with, if you were walking someone outside the mosque or someone out to the door, we say Shia'atuhu lil bab, means I accompanied him, accompanied him and I followed him to the door. Or Shayatuhu la Siyara. I accompanied this person and I walked him to the car. Or Shayatuhu ala tariq. That I followed them along the way on the road as we traveled by. Another thing that we use the word Shia for is when you support someone's opinion or someone's thought. If you are an apologist, someone that defends someone's opinion you shayya that fiqr that you follow this fiqr this is what it comes this thought and this opinion likewise when we follow may Allah prolong your lives when we follow a janazi a body what do we call it the shia janazi we follow it when shayya we follow the janazi as it's been taken the body the funeral march even if you support a football team or you for, support a political party, this is called tash, tashayyuh, tashayyuh, this. You become an ultra or a fan for a club, this is tashayyuh. Or a party, this is tashayyuh. But let's take a look at, this is the origin of the word. What, is it, what does it mean when I call someone a Shia? And if we look at the word that this per person is a Shia, Someone that follows. If you were to look at the dictionary, the first meaning they'll give you, I'm talking about non, um, non Shia dictionary even, they'll say Shi'atu Ali ibn Abi Talib. And obviously they'll say, Radi Allahu an, they won't write Alayhi salam, but this is what it's associated with the followers of Shia, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Why? Because Rasulullah says in the hadith that is Sahih al Sanad, that is authentic. For Sunni and Shia and even the Wahhabis authenticate this hadith. Ibn Taymiyyah himself authenticates it. He says, Shia to Ali, Rasulullah said, Humul Faizuna Yom al Qiyama. The Shia of Ali are the ones that will be triumphant and victorious on the Day of Judgment. So, what is he referring to here? Who is a Shia and what is Shia to Ali? Firstly, we have two people that have carried opinions that are contrary to each other. The ones that said the Shia is anyone that follows the Imams. And the one that said that the Shia is an exclusive group. Both these definitions are correct. Neither on its own, on its lonesome, is correct. 
I can't say one definition is correct and the other is not. So the, what's well known between us is Shia is someone that follows the imama after the messenger, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, the one that accepts Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as the imam and the first khalif is what? A Shia. That's the common meaning. And many sources we have indicate that this meaning is sound because there is at the end of times, you know, one of the hadiths when they're talking about Asr al uh, Dhuhr, just before the Imam rises, do you know what it says? It says the Shia, the Imam says the Shia will fight amongst each other and they will abuse each other and accuse each other of lying. Of lying. So each one will tell one, you're a kadhib, the other one will say, you're a kadhib. And it says, He says, until they'll even speak in each other's face. Now, if it's the exclusive meaning, a righteous Shia is not going to speak in someone else's face. So it gives you the open indication. That's one of these other narrations that will give you of that being the case. And then there is the exclusive Shia. The exclusive Shia, they're not the common Shia. They follow the Imam in every aspect. In his words, they do not contradict his orders nor his prohibitions. In one narration, the Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Inna Shi'atana man shayana. What atharana. وَاقْتَدَى بِأَعْمَالِنَا That our Shia are the ones that, he says our Shia are the ones من شَيَعْنَا What we mentioned in the uh, definition. They follow the Imam. They follow him and they support him, you know. And then he says وَاتَّبَعَ آثَارَنَا وَاتَّبَعَ آثَارَنَا means to follow in their footsteps. In other words, they study the seerah of the Imams. They learn the Imams' lives. You know, sometimes you'll sit there and you'll see someone write. Uh, this is one of the most, I think, most worthless and incorrect statements. But you see it so often. It says, live like Muhammad, fight like Ali, die like Hussein. I say, where they get this from? Because it should be live like Muhammad, Ali, Hassan, Hussein. Fight like Muhammad, Ali, Hassan, Hussein. And die like Muhammad, Ali, Hassan, Hussein. This is not that they all died differently. They all died on the righteous path. Did you know, just, uh, it's a bit of a digression. But you know, if we believe that the shaheed is someone that gets killed in the battlefield, do you know what the Imam says? He says, فَإِذَنَ الشَّهَدَاءَ أَقِلَّا There's only a small amount. If it's only the ones that die in the battlefield, then it's a small amount. And then he says, Yu'altu Fidak, the man with him, he says, then who are the martyrs? He says, all our Shia, even if they die in their beds, are shuhada. So in other words, it's not something that people look at and try and translate themselves. So the second meaning we said is this, the Shia, they, they support the Imam, وَاتَّبَعُوا أَثَارَنَا they follow in our footsteps. They know our lives, so they follow. Amir al Mu'mineen, when he speaks about the Messenger of God, do you know what he says? That the Imam said, I would follow him. Have you ever seen a, a deer and a baby deer? Have you seen a baby deer house always next to the legs of the mother? The Imam said, I used to follow Imam Ali alayhi salam says, I used to follow the Prophet like the baby animal. The calf follows the cow. See how the calf follows the cow? So when you see the baby camel, how it follows the mother, the baby deer, follows the mother, he said, this is how I used to follow the Prophet. Step by step. The third thing he says, وَاقْتَدَى بِأَعْمَالِنَا وَاقْتَدَى بِأَعْمَالِنَا Does what? They emulate the actions of the Imam. Sometimes you say, for example, that I follow this Imam, I follow Ahl al-Bayt, but I have the actions of what? The enemies of Ahl al-Bayt. 
How can I be someone that believes in Ahl al-Bayt and I gamble? Imam Musa ibn Jafar Ali, uh, Musa, Musa ibn Jafar uh, al-Qadim alayhi salam lived at the time of Harun. Harun was a gambler, a huge gambler. So how do I follow? And how do I say I'm a follower of Imam al-Qadim and I gamble? How do I say I follow this person? I follow Imam Hussein, but I drink. And Imam Hussein was the one that said, I do not give allegiance to Yazid because Yazid, Sharab al Khamr, Yazid consumes alcohol. So I need to think about this. I emulate their actions. Another narration, Imam al Baqir says, Innama Shi'atuna man ata Allah. Our Shia, the ones that will follow us, are the ones that obey Allah. It's not a medallion that I wear around my neck. It's not a tattoo I have on my body. It's not a hijab that I wear on my shoulder. Shi'atuna man ata Allah. Our Shia is something not that we wear on ourselves. We can wear it on ourselves. It's what we have in our hearts. What do I have in my heart? I have to obey Allah. Let the word Shia that we establish in general means believer. Someone that has Iman Billah wa bi Rasulihi wa bi walayat ahl al-bayt alayhum as is a Shia in the common sense. So we would say, let's say, Belief has 10 levels, all right? Several levels. Some narrations say 10 levels. These 10 levels, the top level is the Shia. The bottom level is also the Shia, but the common word. So 1 to 9 is common Shia, different levels. And 10 is the exclusive meaning of the Shia. Just to let you know what type of people we're talking about to reach level 10. I remember I, um, I once uh, read, a, uh, I watched a sermon for, for Sheikh Wahid al Khurasani, Hafizahullah, he's 103 years old now. And when I was watching, this is the first time I was, uh, it's in Persian, obviously, it had the subtitles with it. But this is the first time where I had that rude shock of who the Shia are was when he was talking about different types of believers. And he, there was four or five groups he had mentioned. And he said, as for the first one, our Shia, the exclusive group, Sheikh Wahid said that we will not discuss this. We will talk about the other four groups. And he said, do you know why? He said, because not any one of you or me, listen to what he said, ولا العلام الحلي ولا الشيخ الطوسي ولا الشيخ المفيد he says none of those are of the Shia in the exclusive meaning so when I heard this I was shocked I said why then I read the narration where Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam left Masjid al-Qufa one night and he was walking as he was walking he went towards the Jabbin he went towards the cemetery you know, when you're walking, you feel some people are walking behind you. So he felt these people walking behind him. He turned around, he noticed a group of people behind him. He said, Man, Anto, who are you that are following me? They said, Nahnu Shia'atuka ya Amir Munir. We're your Shia. You know who we are, we're your followers. So it says he started to you know, like scan their faces. You know, when you give that look to someone and you, you know, when you're in deep thought, it's just scanning. But with Amir al Mu'mineen, you know, Amir al Mu'mineen, once again, another digression. With Amir al Mu'mineen, you know what, Amir al Mu'mineen, when he, why do we call him Haydar al Qarrar? Why is he called Haydar al Qarrar? Because he chooses who he kills, he scans them. Basically, when he fights, he doesn't kill helter skelter. When he fights anyone who in their next seven generations doesn't have a believer, he says this person is ethnic, 
This person is cleansing. We need to cleanse this person, take him from the earth. This is why it's called Qarrar. He chooses. Allah has given him this basira, this insight that he sees. That this person needs to be cleansed, cleanse him. See you later. This person's not needed. As for everyone else, they just kill what's in front of them. Amir al Mu'minin has this status. So he scans their faces and he says, Wa ma'ali la ara. He says to them, Fa ma'ali la ara alaykum sima ashia. That he says, I do not see the signs of tashayu, of Shia in your faces. So they asked him, What are these signs that you talk about? And this is something just to give you an idea when we talk about the exclusive group. Why Sheikh Wahid would talk like this? Because when you read this, this is like the yardstick. One of my teachers, you know what he used to tell me? He said, Ka'annama, it is as if the Imam is telling you that this person you're talking about is a prophet or an Imam. It's the highest level. He says, Sufru al wujuh min as sahar. Sufr al wujuh. The paled faced. Min as sahar. From staying up at night. Staying up at night, playing Call of Duty. Staying up at night, doing what? Staying up at night, watching Netflix. Staying up at night, fatwara. What are they doing up at night? What is it that they stay up at night and they do? They stay up at night in worship of Allah. In research. That's what they stay up at night. He says, Sufr al wujuh min as sahar. And then he says, Umsh al uyun min al buka. See, you might move up and down each one. Like you'd scale yourself. You know how sometimes you're rating someone? You know, speed, 8 out of 10. Strength, 3. You look at yourself, the first one, all right. How much do I keep? Oh, yeah, I pray Salat al once a week, all right. Yeah, I probably have about 3 or 4 out of 10 or 2 out of 10. And then you rate yourself somewhere there. And even if you stay, if you, if you honestly, if you pray Salat al you're sitting at a seven already. Seven out of ten. Someone gets up and prays Salat because there's not anyone can get up and pray Salat al When I say it's tawfiq, it's providence, you could be up at night and you won't even pray Salat al Witr, which is, you know how long? Salat al Witr, if you want to do it with no mustahabs. Simple, simple Salat al Witr, no mustahabs. You know what it is? Fatha. You don't have to read Qulu Allah Ahad. But you can. Okay. Qulu Allah Ahad. Fatha Qulu Allah Ahad. It's mustahab pray. Ruku'ah. You can do the Qunut. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ruku'ah. Sajdin. Tashahud. Taslim. How long will that take? Less than a minute. Less than a minute. It takes you more than a minute, mate. You're reading things up. That, that. If you can do that... If you do that once a week, forget every night, once a week, you're doing pretty well. This is how much tawfiq that people need to pray Salat al Some people don't even pray it in Shah Ramadan when most people are worshipping. The second one he says, Umshul Uyum min al buka. There are people that don't even cry. I'll be sitting in an Arafah or in the Hajj. There are people sitting there, they don't even not one tea comes down. In Arafah, where you're supposed to Arafah at Tirif, with your choice, it's a confessional with you and God, where you sit there and say all the sins you've ever committed. You say them to God. And that's a moment where you're being cleansed. People don't cry. It's people that don't cry during Muharram. Yet these people cry not because their house was robbed. They cry from the fear of God. Yet some people, when they want to commit a sin, they do it immediately. Ma bad dashi. Amshul ayyuman al bukat means their eyes are bleary. You know, bleary eyed people, you know, when you see that their eyes, you know, if someone's been crying or someone's got a cold, you can see they look bleary eyed. From the amount that they cry, you can see the sadness in their eyes from them crying. Then he says, Hudbu al-Dhuhur min al-Qiyam. 
Hutbu Duhur. Have you ever seen when someone's got an arched back? How even if it's slight, but you could see that their back has been burdened from what? From standing. Standing doing what? Qiyam and Salah. They sit there and they pray. That they stand so much from their prayers. They recite the Quran in their prayers. You know, when we're praying Jama'ah, the Imam of the Salah is supposed to pray fast. You know that. He's supposed to pray at a speed that, you know, you don't want anyone to sit there and say, hold on. Salah bin Nas bi Adafim. Salah, when you pray with the people, pray in comparison to the people that are there, the weakest amongst them. Make it that easy for them that when you pray. The ones that need to leave, you know? So don't do all the extras. But when you're praying by yourself, it's just between you and God. Recite. Sometimes recite another surah. One of the surah that's good to recite. When you do salat al istighath you know istighatha bil hujj. You want something, this is the gem of the salah. It's called a dua. The first rikah, you read the fatha and surah al fatha. And the second rikah, you read the fatha and surah al nasr. Surah al fatha, you read it. And you read, you know, when you read another surah, and if you ever pray and read another surah, a long surah, you'll actually feel something you've never felt before. So, their backs are arched from this. And then he says, خُمْسُ buton min siyam That their stomachs are barren. You know, stomachs are barren. They're empty from the amount of fasting that they do. That they fast. They stay without. They're not on an Atkins diet. They're not calorie counting. Fasting. They are fasting. This is how they spend. Doesn't mean they fast every day, but they do it a lot. So, one of these where I see where I write here. And then he says, Dubulu Shifa Mina Dua. That their lips are shriveled and dried. You know? From what? For the amount of dua, supplication that they do. Finally, he says, عَلَيْهِمْ غَبَرَةُ الْخَاشِعِينَ Upon them is the dust of those that are submissive. Because the khashi'a is what? Is a penitent person. What does a penitent person do? They're always doing sujood. The prostration because they're in fear of God. So he says they don't have the marks of so these people are the ones that have the marks of those that have submissiveness. Those that are penitent to Allah. They've got contrite hearts. Their hearts are always obtain. They contain that reverential fear. This is what it comes to. I've given you the top, the peak. But the price of being a Shia, it doesn't come easy. See, all these things I mentioned, from the outside world, you're going to be rejected. You know what I mean? My, my son was at school today. They had a multicultural day. And he said to me, oh, the Arabs were there. They all had the dirbaki. They've been in Trump and everyone's dancing. And you know, and he just usual, you know, he was the Nigel no mates there, or a few other guys that weren't allowed. That did. That's how you feel. You're left out. You're not in it. People don't want to be around you. You can't do anything. You have a boring life. When you become, when the higher you want to become, you'll be left with no one. This is what happens. People leave you. Allah. <laughs> لم يزال مستضعفين قليلين منذ خلق الله آدم. The awliya Allah, the friends of Allah, the ones that are with Allah, they remain a small amount. He says, and they become مستضعفين. مستضعف. You know, مستضعف doesn't mean weak. مستضعف means someone that hasn't got the ability. You know, where you haven't got the ability to do anything. Because you got no support. You know, sure, am I going to stand up against the herd? I just sit. That's what it means. It doesn't mean you're weak. It means you um, have been, you're, you're disempowered. They've taken the power away from you. That's all. 
he says, um, from the time God created Adam. So the further you become righteous, the more you become along the straight and narrow. The closer you get to God, the further away you get from the people. People reject you. What do you think when you're doing the right thing, everyone's on your side? The more you do the right thing, the more people are going to turn away from you. They're going to start calling you a fanatic. They hear them attacked. You've heard that word. Heard them He's a fanatic. And some people are attacked and some people are fanatics. Some people are tapped in the head. But generally, the mu'min will be rejected not only by the kuffar. The mu'min gets rejected by the Muslims. The mu'min even gets rejected by his own family. I want to tell you something. You see a sister that wants to wear hijab at a young age. How many naysayers get up? She's still young. Why are you putting a scarf? Let's the dhulam. You know, why are you oppressing her? And then they'll see a sister that's half naked. No one ever tells her, go get dressed. No one says wear hijab. Everyone goes, mashallah, shuhalwi. Look how pretty you are. If you got it, flaunt it, sister. You know, just show it to everybody. No one will sit there and say, what are you doing? It's just, it's, it's just the, the mentality of people. The way that they understand things. And they've got it the wrong way. For me to head to what this target is. Because the target is to become like this. And obviously, it's a very high target. How high is it? I will let you know. Just so you can see how far it is. But we work our way towards. This is our goal. Because the beauty of us being human beings, we're able to what? We're able to improve ourselves. We're able to increase in value. Do you want to you know how quickly, listen to me, how quickly you can increase in value? Do you want to know how high you can? I'm going to give you just a point. One, I'm going to give you one that was someone that was an Uthmani and someone that was a Christian and someone that was with the Nawasib. The one that was Uthmani was Zuhair ibn al-Qain. Al-Asadi. Zuhair ibn al-Qain. When he was out and he saw the camp of Imam Hussain alayhi salam coming, he said to his servant, if Hussain comes to talk to me, do not let him talk to me. Like, tell him I'm not I'm busy. He said, why? He said, because I'm afraid I won't reject anything he asks for. So I don't want to talk to him. This is his original approach. Zuhair ibn al-Qain ended up as a what? A shaheed in Karbala. He ended up following Imam Hussain. That's a long story for another time. Wahab was a Christian. Same thing, he was a Christian. Heard the call of Imam Hussain. And finally, Al-Hurra ibn Yazid al-Riyah. Who was with the Nawasim and turned. What level are these people in a moment? In a moment they turned from zero to what? 100. Do you know how when we say 100? Do you want to know their station? When the Imam does the ziyara, he says, Bi abi antum wa ummi. The Imam, when he does the ziyara to the companions of Imam Hussain, he says, Bi abi antum wa ummi. May my mother and father be at ransom to you. Can you imagine that? And this is why I always need to put my head in that direction. One man came up to the fourth Imam. And he said to the Imam, I am of your Shia. And the Imam said to him, فَإِذَنْ أَنْتَكَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْخَلِيلُ You are like Ibrahim al-Khalil. My Shia is like... So to let you know what the level we're talking about. You're like Ibrahim al-Khalil. الَّذِي قَالَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمُ of the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, Allah is saying is Ibrahim al-Khalil. He's obviously Shia. That's the level you're talking about. إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ When Ibrahim turned to his Lord, he turned with Qalb Salim. What does Qalb Salim? You know, you read that verse, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On the day of judgment, no wealth, 
No children will benefit you except what? Having al qalb al salim. What's al qalb al salim? Imam al Sadiq says al qalb al salim is the qalb that has nothing in it except Allah. That's what I'm talking about. It's another level. Imagine in your heart, there's nothing but Allah. And just about a thought, it's, 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 it's something that is beyond for you to even imagine what I'm talking about. But you build towards that. Slowly, I want to build myself towards that. And then he says, فَإِن كَانَ قَلْبُكَ كَقَلْبِهِ فَأَنْتَ مِنْ شِيَعَتِنَا If your heart is like the heart of Ibrahim, then you are our followers. This is the top level what we're talking about. Imam Hussein alayhi salam in a narration, he says, inna shi'atina, because we want to become, this is the level, inna shi'atina, man salimat qulubuhum. He explains, how do I make my heart salim? Our shi'a are the ones, man salimat qulubuhum, it's at salimati and it's at peace, who has a tranquil heart. He says, salimat, he means safe as well, Mishaykh, safe from what? He says, salimat qulubuhum min kulli ghishin, وَغِلِّنْ وَدَغَلِنْ غِش is what? Deceit, treachery, betrayal. Okay, if you want to deceive people. But غش, you know what's wrong about غشني? A Shia, it be غش. I remember once my grandfather, Sheikh Ahmad Mehdi, since you smiled, he said to me that uh, my father told me that the butcher, a local butcher in the area, came and said to him, Sheikhna, what makes the salah accepted? What are the things that make salah accepted? My grandfather said to him, He said, You want your salah to be accepted? Do you understand what I mean? People will tell you, Ah, oh, your wudu. No, no, before we even think. Madrish. So he says, غش وغل ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا not have spite you know we're dirty on each other for some reason you find someone he's upset with someone over something and it's something pointless you know sometimes I'll see two people arguing and he and you see hatred and they're related and then one of them says to the other شوشيفني إسرائيلي إدامك do you think I'm a Zionist in front of you and I said, you know, your words ring so true. How the hell is he treating you like this? How can you treat each other with spite? Over some things, rather than solve, you know, sometimes I want to do a reconciliation between two parties. And always one of them says, I refuse to sit. I can't sit with them, I don't trust them. I said, you can't sit with them because when you look in their faces, you'll feel the guilt. Or when you look in their faces, you'll feel sorry. What's the reason you can't sit with them? Well, I understand when someone's been uh, violated by someone, but someone that's, oh my God, he's robbed me in a deal, or he's robbed me with something. No, you can sit with them. Even when we're talking about violation, w women that have been or, or violated, they see the, in the courtroom, they actually look at the person, he's present. So when there's an issue that needs to be resolved, that you could be able to sit there with them. Don't tell me, I don't talk to this person. I refuse to talk to this person. I can't have spite. Because most of the problems with people are, are pointless. They're not even big problems. What's big is the aftermath. You know when someone says, Masabali, he swore to me. Did he swear to you before the fight or after? You know, all these fear in love and war. When we go to war, if you notice two countries, they bomb the hell out of each other. The next second they're smiling, shaking hands. How long were the Iranians and the Saudis fighting for? Everyone's friends now. They're all at the table. Isn't that true? That's what happens. How many people were you two killing each other when you stopped talking? So then I have ghil. Wala daghal. Daghal means they're not corrupt. They're not corruptible. So these three things must be removed from the heart. Corruption, spite, and deceit. How do I act when I see another Shia? Now we're talking about the common meaning. Any Shia. Imam al Baqir alayhi salam says, Man adkhala ala rajunin min shi'atina. Surura. Whoever makes a believer happy. Do you imagine just making a believer happy? 
he says فَقَدْ أَدْخَلَهُ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وآله. so when you make a believer happy you're making the prophet happy it's an immediate reaction he says وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ أَدْخَلَ عَلَيْهِ أَذًا أَوْ غَمَ likewise if you harm a believer when you hurt a believer's feelings you hurt the feelings of Rasulullah you upset a believer you upset Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa one of the narrations the imam says alright you're not shia call yourselves what muwalina wa muhibbin that we are people that wali man wa we, we wali inni waliun liman walaqum wa aduan liman adaqum I am someone that follows and, and, and aids and supports and befriends whoever you befriend and I'm an enemy of whoever you're an enemy of and then he says muhabbin what's the importance of being muhabbin la ahl al-bayt there's one story and this story is even narrated by Abu Huraira as well narrates this hadith as well Ibn Abbas narrates it and even Abu Huraira he says that one day Rasulullah is in the masjid and he does five prostrations without a rak'ah, you know, without, just does five prostrations. When he does the five prostrations, they ask him, Ya Rasulullah, is this a new addition or a new prayer? Or what is it? He says, no. They said, then what did you do? He said, Qad atani Jibra'il. Jibra'il just came. And he said to me, that Allah sends his salam to you and he says that verily in Allah you habbu aliyah that Allah loves Ali so he said when I heard this I prostrated in thanks to Allah that Allah loves Ali and then he said in Allah you habbu Fatima that Allah loves Fatima so I prostrated for the second time in gratitude to Allah then he said in Allah you habbu al-hasan that Allah loves Al Hasan, so he said, I prostrated the third time in gratitude to Allah. And then he said, Inna Allah yuhibbul Hussein. That Allah loves Al Hussein, so I prostrated the fourth time. What is the fifth time? He says, Inna Allah yuhibbu man ahabbahum. Allah loves whoever loves them. So he said, I prostrated in the fifth time to show gratitude to Allah. This is the bottom level. You ask the bottom level of being a believer that Allah loves you. So imagine the top level. If the bottom level, Allah loves you, what's the top level? If I'm just someone that uh, has this, where does it benefit me? On the the hadith says, "Inna hubbuna ahl al bayt la yuntafau bihi fi sab'i mawatin." In seven situations, the love of Ahl al bayt benefits you. In seven situations. And I'll finish with this hadith. The first one, he says, And Allah. And Allah benefits you. How? Listen to this story. I'm going to let you know. So when we're talking about levels, there's the highest levels. But Quran says, Man zuhziha an nar wa udkhil al jannah faqad faz. If you just slip through. You know what I mean? You know, if you ever like watching a game, Of cricket, for example, and they need a boundary to win. Okay, they need four runs to win, and the bowler bowls it, and it comes off the guy's helmet and goes for four. He's going to say, "Oh, look, it doesn't count," you know. He says, "Mate, I'll take that. I'm going to win four runs coming off my helmet. That's good enough. They'll take whatever. I'll take whatever I'm given on their judgment." You know, one person said to said once. He said to me, if they're taking animals in, I'll go on all fours just to go. I'll become a furry on the day of judgment. Back then, furries didn't exist. But he said, I'll go on all fours just to enter paradise. The bottom state that I can get into, I'll get into. So it helps you, and Allah, how on the day of judgment, one of the ulama said he saw in his dream. He said he saw himself on the day of judgment. And this person was a marja, not just anyone. He said that they did my hisab and they said 
You haven't done enough to enter paradise. Take him away. Listen to this story. Says Abra. He said, as they were taking me away, they said, your prayers. Sometimes it didn't have full tawajjuh. You weren't fully turning to God. Your fasting and your this, everything they said, sometimes I had this, sometimes I had that. And then he said, what about all the alam? They said, yeah, we gave you the marja'i. People followed you. And you were respected. And as they're taking him away, they said to him, unless you can give us something, that you had, that had a class that was sincere, you will be taken off to hell. So as he's been taken away, he turned around and he said, Ya Allah, I said, what? It's the wilaya. The wilaya al-ahl al He said, what did I get from it? What did you get from it? The nasbi sabbuk, and people abuse you. People curse you. Every time you say, I'm shia, they say, kafir, rafidi. You're rejected by everyone. You got a hajj, you're rejected. I had a friend and a brother, my brother and a friend. They went to Dubai. Do you know what they told me? They said, everyone's accepted in Dubai except the Shia. The Israeli is accepted in Dubai. The Sodomite is accepted in Dubai. Everyone's accepted in Dubai except the Shia. Sahabalallah. Do you remember that video that guy was next to uh, uh, Rukhna al-Yamani in Hajj and he was saying a shahar for Amin al Do you remember that old video a couple of years ago? Someone made a video? Just to let you know that guy's still in jail. He got arrested, he's still in jail. Up to now. He hasn't been released. I used to work with a guy. He was an Iraqi man who lived here. Had no affiliation with anything. He went to, he got a, a, a job with one of the uh, companies there. Then he was jailed for life. They kept working with the Australian government after five years of jail, they managed to get him back to Australia. Why? Because he was a Shia. Because he was a Shia. So this man said, Ya Allah, my wilaya, Mustafa the chair, everyone hated me. They never even consider us Muslims. You always. My, one of my brothers was at a march once for Palestine and one guy standing behind him you know what he said he said he you heard him say he goes if I knew there were gonna be this many Shia dogs here I would not be here one guy said that behind him he said I said Allahumma salli ala Muhammad ala Muhammad just to calm the motor down because it's fitna to shaitan to get you going you know what I mean he said I kept walking this is he said I followed this what did I get from it? Bahdalet. I did it because I loved Ahl al -Bayt. And Allah says, Sadaqt. And says, take him to paradise. So the first mountain is and Allah. The second is and al maut. When you think when you die, you know, when you read the Quran, Nazi'ati, Gharqa. The ones that rip the souls out, is that for us? No. The ones that rip the souls out. If anyone wants to get any idea of it, it's it's horrific just to think about it. And then it says, "Wa nashitati, nashita." There's the angels that rip the souls out, and then there's the ones that come. They're very nice when they're taking it. They're so nice that the Imam says that the Malak al Mawt in one of the Hadith. Because when he will have Ahl al bayt telling him to look after the Shia. This is one hadith. He says, Inna malak al mawt, The angel of death. He says, will be more tender upon the believer. This person than what? Then a mother is to her infant. Have you seen a mother to an infant? Notice, you know, the two or three year old automatically is off the pedestal. Kicked away. Does it? Matarib, don't come near him. This two-year-old that was afraid if he would eat anything, I'd push him away. And the new baby has taken the pedestal. See how soft this is how the angel of death will be to the believer. The first one's with Allah, the second one's the Mawt. And then it says, وَعَنْدَ الْقَابْرِ In the grave. The grave is what? Wahsha. You know what Wahsha means? Loneliness. Real loneliness. You're on your own. Are you? Are you really on your own? 
أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب says من يموت يراني whoever dies will see me this is the thing you will see أهل البيت you would be so good in your grave you will love to أهل البيت that you don't want to return to the dunya at any cost that's the third benefit from the love of Ahl al-Bayt. The fourth place is when Yawm al-Hashr. Hashr is resurrection. When you're raised on the day of judgment. You know, I tell people, today is the days we celebrate the birth of Ali ibn Musa Radha, salawatullahi alayhi. Allah yirzikna ziyarta, Ali ibn Musa Radha. You know, on the day of judgment, there'll be a banquet, you know, there'll be a sufra. It was a day of jur and atash. There will be a sufra. Imagine a banquet. And on this banquet, the Imam Al-Qadim says, all those that visited our graves will sit on the banquet. And then he says, the ones with the highest station and the ones that sit next to us, the nearest, Manzara Waladi Ali. Imam Al-Qadim says, the ones that visit Ali ibn Musa Radha, they are the ones that sit the closest to us. So on the day of resurrection, this is where the ones that love Ahl al-Bayt, we know when we, read, we pray Salat al-Mayyit, Allahumma ahshurhu ma man kana tawalla, whoever that they supported and aided, ma'an nabi. And you know yourself who you love. You know yourself where your loyalty lies and with who. And the people that attend majelis, they're the top tier. They're the top tier. They're the people that actually turn up. It's a Friday night. People are doing other. This is what I always tell people. People actually turn up on a Friday night to a speech. Or imagine they're top tier. Why? Because Friday night you can be doing everything else. You can watch the Tigers lose at 8 o'clock. But you know, you're here. It's in an hour. But anyway. He says, وَعِنْدَ الْحَوْضِ The Hawd is the pond. That we, the pond that where Rasulullah Hawd that will Rasul Amir al Mumin will be giving people water to drink from. This is where your love benefits you. You know, as you say the Rada al Hindi in the poem, what does he say? So what to Sahifa ta Amali wa kaltu al Amra ila Haidar Hua Kahfi min nuwa bid dunya wa shafi fi yom al mahshar haliam na uni wa huwa saki and ashrabu min hawd al kawta. That poem, when in it, he says, Will he prevent me from drinking? And he's the water bearer. He's the one that gives. Ali ibn Abi Talib. Is he going to prevent me from drinking? I loved him. Is he going to prevent me? Then he says, mizan. You know the mizan where your actions are going to be weighed. Do you know what the hadith says? On, so each one, there's a hadith for it. What the hadith says about the mizan, the scale that shows your actions. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, these scales when they're underweighed, I will weigh them down with the reward of the salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali. This is where it benefits. There's no action that has more reward than this. Imagine this, look, look at this mercy and benevolence of Allah that an action this small has a reward that cannot be even counted except by Allah Azza wa Jal himself. And finally he says, وَعَنْدَ sirat. Sirat is the final step that you have. It's the bridge that takes you to paradise. This bridge that they say is thinner than a hair and sharper than a sword. There your love for Ahl al-Bayt will benefit you. And this is where the hadith comes in and Sorry, I've taken up a lot of your time. I've been up here for 50 minutes. I really apologize. But this is where it will benefit you. We have on the day of judgment that when Fatima alayhi salam, as Zahra alayhi salam, she's ordered to enter paradise by Allah. Ya Amati Fatima enter. And the narration says she will look back. This is a Sahih hadith. It's on Jabir al-Jafi, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, narrates it. And Jabir al-Jafi narrates it on Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. 
And this as a hadith you'll hear from many of the fuqaha and the ulama. And it's not something where you'll hear it from someone in a backyard alley reading it. This is an authentic hadith. He says, the Fatima will look back. And Allah says, why did you look back? She said, I wish for them to know qadri. I want the people to know what my station is. She says, oh Fatima, go back and pick the ones that loved you. And bring them into paradise. And then he says, Wallahi ya Jabbar. Imam Sadiq says, She will pick them like the bird picks the good seed from the bad seed. And she'll pick them out. You know how the bird picks it? Specifically, they're very meticulous. She'll pick them all out. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. When all the ones she picked get to the door of paradise, Allah will inspire them to look back. Not they look back because they're in a hurry to get in, you know. So Allah will inspire them to look back and Allah will say, why did you look back? They say, we want everyone to know our station of who we are, the lovers of Fatima. And this is the beauty of the love of Ahlul Bayt. Then Allah says, okay, go back. The ones that didn't love, the ones that missed out, go get them. The one, anyone he says, they gave you something to eat for the love of Fatima. Anyone that gave you something to drink for the love of Fatima. You know, I tell a lot of the people that cook, when you're making food, always say, for example, today, you know, the birth of Imam Radha alayhi salam, say, this tabqa I'm making is ala ruh Ali ibn Musa Radha. For the love of Ali ibn Musa Radha and feed your children. Now people think sadaqa, you know, sometimes when it comes to sadaqa, people love putting money in the tin. It's good to put money. Did you know if you give your child something, this is sadaqa? Karji, you're giving them, take school, pocket money, that's, that's sadaqah. Sadaqah is not only upon the poor, sadaqah is on everybody. Sadaqah means a hasana that you do, good action. So then they will pick out who? The ones that did any of this, even those that helped you for the love of Fatima. And this is where it will benefit on their judgment. I apologize for the longevity of the speech. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal. To grant us the opportunity to visit the grave of Ali ibn Musa Rada alayhi salam and grant us his intercession on the day of judgment. We ask Allah to hasten the reappearance of our master Al Hujat ibn al Hassan al Mahdi arwahuna fida. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma kul waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-hasan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih Fi hadihi al-sa'a Wa fi kulli sa'a Waliyan wa hafidha وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والأرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والأرواح موتانا جميعا ولقضاء الحواج قبول الأعمال وشفاء المرضى وغفران الذنوب وتعجيل الفرج وحسن العاقبة رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات